Today we're going to build a navigation for your website. So we're actually going to start building the website that I said in the first video that we're going to start building as we went along this video series here. Um, so what we're going to do to start with here is just to do a couple of checks because we want to make sure we have everything when it comes to uh, making the project that we have in front of us here. The first thing I want to mention is that you should make sure you have a reset style sheet. So if you skip that video, then I recommend going back so you actually have a reset file. In the first video in this course here, I did also ask you to remove a certain attribute from inside the HTML tag. I am now asking you to put it back in, uh, which is the language or lang equal to double quotes. And then we're going to set this one to English. If you have a website in your particular language, so if I'm making a Danish website, of course, this would actually be DK instead. So depending on your country code, uh, you would actually be inserting the, um, you know, whatever country the, the website is based on. So if you're living, for example, in Denmark, like I am right now, but I'm making a English website, then of course I should put English inside the tag here because it makes sense to the language the website is actually written in. Uh, so just so you make sure to put that back in. The reason we have it is to make sure that browsers and other types of readers, for example, if you have a disability and you need whatever reader you have to actually read up what is inside your website, it needs to know what language your website is written in. So it's very important that we have this just to make sure that everyone and all machines that are trying to read your website actually knows how to read it in the language that it's written in. The last thing you need to have is inside your root folder, we need to have a couple of different images because we will be inserting a logo and a couple of social media links inside our website. So going inside our image folder, I want to have these five images inside my website. Essentially, I have a logo on the side here. I do also have a social media link for both Facebook and Instagram. And I did also make a black and white version of it just so we made sure to uh, be able to have this hover effect when we hover on top of the image. We did talk about how to do that. So that's something we're gonna do in this episode here. And we're gonna go and use these images together with the navigation inside our header. So with that said, uh, the last thing I want to mention here is that my personal material here is of course available to all the different members on my channel. So if you are a member, you can of course gain access to it inside the description of this video at the very bottom. Of course, my personal files are not going to have anything inside of it that you won't see in this video here. But just in case you want to have my personal files, then that is something you can download from in there. So with that said, let's actually go and dive into this video. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure we actually create the header inside the website. So what I can do here is I can create a header tag inside my body tag. And inside the header tag, we have to think about how we want to structure everything first, because we did talk about Flexbox in one of the previous videos. And we are going to be using Flexbox in order to properly organize content inside our header. So what I want to do here is I first of all want to create a div that is going to be the container for my logo. I'm also gonna go ahead and create a navigation tag because I want to actually have some semantics that tells my browser that this is a navigation inside the website. And then I want to create a second div, which is going to be for my social media links. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and save this and I can start inserting all the different elements inside my containers here. So what I wanna do first is I want to actually style these so we can actually see how they look like inside the browser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside my style sheet here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to actually target our header here. Now we could just write header, but this would target every single header inside our website since we can also use headers in other places than just the main header at the top of the website. So it is a good idea to create a class so we're going to say class is going to be equal to header dash main, just so we have a name for it. And we're going to rename this one to class header main. We're going to open up using curly brackets. And the first thing we need to do is we want to create a width because we want the, the header to fill the entire width of the website. So I'm going to go ahead and say we want a width of 100% because that is also a dimension you can choose instead of pixels. And I'm going to go down to next line. And I'm going to create a height and set this one to 60 pixels. And I'm also going to give it a background color so we can actually see what is going on inside our website. So in this case here, I can make it something like, let's just go ahead and make this entirely white. So I'm going to say FFF, save it, go inside our browser and refresh it. Now we do of course also need to make sure we save our HTML document. As you can see, I have this little round icon up here next to my uh, document name, which means that I haven't saved it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Going inside my browser, I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. And now I can see we have this main header at the top of the website. And you can always change the size of it. So right now, 
I just want to make sure that I'm zoomed in properly. Like this is how it's going to look like on your website, because like I've said in previous episodes, I'm using a larger monitor. Uh, so this is how it would realistically look like for you inside a 1920 by 1080 monitor. So with that, we can now actually start to change the styling for the content inside our header so we can actually see it. So going back inside our CSS, what I could do is I could again, just kind of like target these uh, using the header main, I'm gonna go down below here and say we have a div, but doing it this way can kind of, if we make changes to the header in the future, mess things up. So let's make sure we give these a class. Now there are different naming conventions when it comes to naming classes inside your CSS. There is a very popular one called block element modifier, which is a naming convention that people use. Let's not go too deep into that one for now. Let's just go ahead and, and just name it something that makes sense to us. So I could actually go ahead and say, this is my header main logo, just so we know exactly what this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the name of this one and say we have a class called header main logo. Then we're gonna open it up here, go down to the next line. And let's just go ahead and make sure that the rest of these also have some class names. So we're gonna go ahead and say we have a class, I'm gonna copy paste it in, and then we're just gonna go ahead and change them. So the second one is going to be header dash main dash nav. And then we can say the last one is header dash main dash social media. So SM in this case here. And of course we do also need to add in the styling names. So we're gonna go ahead and just copy paste a couple of times and make sure we change the names so they fit according to our class name. So now we have all three inside our CSS file. So what I can do is I can go ahead and say that these should have a width to start with here, just because we need to have something so we can see something inside the browser. I'm gonna set the width to 120 pixels, just so we have something. I'm also gonna set a height and I'm gonna set this one to 100%. And now you may be thinking that I'm actually typing in 100% of the browser's height, but because this one is inside a container, which is in this case our header here, it is actually going to be 100% of the height of the container that is inside of. So in this case here, just so we can see things, let's go ahead and say 100%, give it a background color and just give it some kind of, uh, let's say yellow just so we know exactly where it is inside the browser. And then I'm just gonna copy paste what we have here inside the other ones. Scroll down, paste it in, and I'm gonna change the colors to blue and red. If I were to save this, go inside my browser, you can now see that we have these boxes here. So what we need to do is what we learned inside our Flexbox episode, which is to actually add Flexbox to our main container. So going up inside our header main, I'm gonna say we have a display and I'm gonna set this one to flex, which means that now just by doing that, it's gonna start placing the content inside our header. So what I can do is I can start changing how the flex should work with the content inside the browser. So in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and say I want to justify content and I want to set this one to space between. So we do that, go back inside, you can now see that everything has been split out. And you have to ask yourself here, what exactly are you trying to do when it comes to placing the content inside your browser? Do you want the navigation to be centered, which it is right now? Or do you want it to be right next to the logo, which in that case, what you can do is you can take your navigation and put it inside your logo div, like so. Because if you do this and save it, we now have a navigation inside this box over here and it will actually shift out as soon as we add an actual image of a logo inside the main container. So let's go ahead and do that now and go down to the next line and I can actually go ahead and say I want to insert a image. The source is going to be inside my image folder and it's going to be the image called logo.png. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a logo name. So in this case here, I just came up with a random name for this company here. I can't actually remember what the name is. It is Imagon. So we're just gonna go ahead and say Imagon logo. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one, go inside my browser. And as you can see, we now have the image in here, but there's also something else you may notice, which is that the content is not shifting next to each other. And that's because the original box is not large enough to actually fit the content in here. So what I can do is I can actually go inside my first div that I have in here, which is called header dash main dash logo. And instead of setting the width to a fixed width amount, I can actually give this one fit 
dash content. Well, not fit dash content, but fit dash content. This will actually make the container auto adjust to however long the content is that is inside of it. So everything fits in one line. So would actually save this, go inside my browser. You can now see that everything just kind of like shifts out. In this case here, it's actually gonna fit with the original image because this is the original size of the image. So we do need to scale that down. So going back inside our CSS, I'm gonna go right beneath my logo styling and I'm actually gonna target the image that is inside of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have this same path for the header dash main dash logo. And I want to target the image and set a fixed height. So in this case here, I'm gonna say height is going to be half of what my height for the, the header is, which in this case is 60 pixels. So I'm gonna say this one has to be 30 pixels. And with that, if I go back inside the browser, you can now see that it scales down and actually fit somewhat what I want the logo size to be inside my, my, my header here. Now, the next thing we need to fix here is that the content is going below each other. And you may be asking, why is it doing that? Because everything was next to each other before. So why is it going below now? Well, that's because remember in the Flexbox episode, I talked about that it's only the content that is directly inside the container that has Flexbox applied to it that is going to adjust next to each other. Meaning that right now, these two pieces of content are not gonna go next to each other. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Either we can apply a float next to both of these elements, or we can make the div that has the logo styling also a Flexbox. So let's go ahead and do that. So going inside our styling here, this is the header dash main dash logo. I can actually go ahead and say display flex, save this, go inside my browser. And now you'll notice that the content is going next to each other. So now all we have to do is actually create content for these different other boxes that we have here, because we have the logo, but we don't have the navigation and we don't have the social media links. So what I can do here is I can go back inside my editor. And what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and insert a navigation. So inside my nav tags here, this is actually what this episode was supposed to originally be about, which is how to create a unordered list of list items. So you can actually have a navigation inside your website. But I thought, why not just make the entire navigation and just talk about this particular thing in this video here. So essentially when it comes to creating a list of items inside your website, you can go ahead and create something called a unordered list or UL, which is the HTML tag name. Inside the UL, I'm gonna go ahead and create a list item, which is in this case going to be my home because this is the, the link for the home page. And with this, if I were to save this, go back inside my browser, you can now see, well, this is actually kind of hard to see because we have, um, it's kind of like a dark background we have, but it is in here as you can see. Now it is important to mention here that because we have our reset style sheet, this is going to look a little bit different than if you don't have your reset style sheet, because right now you can't really see what this is, like what is a unordered list? Well, basically if you were to go inside any kind of place, um, let me actually go ahead and do this using a Word document. If you want to create bullet points, let's say I create bullet points here and I create a list of things. Let's actually zoom in so you can see things. If I create a list of items using bullet points, this is what we're creating right now. But we're making this into a navigation. And because we have the reset style sheet, it is actually removing the bullet points. So it looks like this instead. So even though you can't see it, it is a list of items using bullet points. Okay. So what I can do is I can go back inside my editor and I can actually go ahead and make this into a link. So right around the text, I'm gonna go and create a anchor tag and I'm also gonna go ahead and make sure I close it off and I'm gonna take the closing anchor tag and put it on the other side of my text here. So right now we do actually have an anchor tag linked to this particular text here. Of course, it does need to lead someplace. So we're gonna go inside the opening anchor tag and we're gonna create a hyper reference and set this one to index.html which is the front page to this website here. And the reason it's the front page is of course, because this is the home button, which should take the user to the front page. Now, what I can do is I can actually copy this list item, paste it below. So we now have a second one. And let's actually go ahead and do that two more times just to have them. And what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and change the text with these links here. So the second one could, for example, be gallery. So people can go into a place and actually see images if they want to. I can change the third one to about us. 
I can change the last one to contact, just so we have a contact page as well. And with that, we also do need to change the links because right now all these links actually take the user to the front page. We don't want to do that. So the default um, placeholder that we usually use when it comes to links is actually just by writing hashtag because right now we don't actually have a link to take them to. We don't have a page called aboutus.html or contact.html. So the placeholder is just to use a hashtag because that is still gonna convert this to a link but not actually take the user anywhere when they click the link. So for now, let's just go and do that. Go inside the browser, refresh it. And now you can see we actually have these inside the browser here. Now let's actually go and change the background for this blue here because we can't really see what is going on. So if I scroll down to the blue background, let's actually go ahead and just make this one orange just because I think it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so what we can do here is right now you can see we don't actually have this little hand cursor icon when it comes to links. And that is actually because of our reset style sheet. So we need to fix that because if I were to click these, you can actually see the URL changing up here because it's actually acting like a link. So if I go back inside my styling, go to the top of the page right after where we change the background color for the entire website, I can actually go ahead and say that I want all anchor tags to have a cursor that is set to a pointer. So if I save this, go back inside the website, you can now see that we actually have a pointer when we actually go on top of the different menu icons. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to make sure that all the listed items go next to each other because this is not how we want the navigation to be inside our website. We actually want them to have next to each other and we want to change how the, the text actually looks like because right now it has this like weird um, Times New Roman ugly looking font. So what I want to do is I want to go back inside my style sheet and I want to go down to where we actually have the navigation styling. So right here with the background color set to orange. I'm going to go ahead and target this particular class and say that I want to go inside of it and target a unordered list. Then I'm going to say curly brackets and I'm going to go and copy paste this one two more times because not only do we need to target the unordered list, but we also need to target the list item and we also need to target the anchor tag. So the list item anchor tag could also just do anchor tag, but let's actually make sure we do it all the way with the, uh, with the path here. So what I can do is I can go inside the unordered list. And right now, because of the reset style sheet, we don't actually technically have to do this, but in case anyone watching is not using a reset style sheet, what you can do is you can actually go ahead and say list style and set this one to none which is actually going to fix the bullet points that I was talking about that may be on the left side of your listed items. So if you don't want those to show, this is how I can remove them. Inside my list items, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I want these to be next to each other. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and say I want to display and I want to display in line. And we do also need to change the width for this one because right now it has a fixed width. So even if I were to go inside and refresh, you can see it doesn't jump next to each other because right now uh, it doesn't have space for it to jump next to each other. So let's actually go ahead and take fit content and put inside our width here as well. So doing that, refreshing, you can now see that everything jumps next to each other. However, you may notice something here and this may just be me being picky but if I were to go up here, you can actually see that my little hand icon for the link is actually going away and then it's popping back up, which means that the different list items are not entirely next to each other inside of here. And there is a way to fix that. So if I were to go back inside my styling, I can go in here and say that when it comes to my list items, I want to add a float left to make sure they all float entirely next to each other. Don't ask me why, this will fix the issue. It's just something I found out many years ago. So if I were to refresh it, you can now see that they get completely squeezed together, which is something I like to do because now I have full control of how many pixels they should be apart when it comes to styling it. So going back inside my CSS file here, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna style the actual text. And when it comes to doing that, there's two different ways you can create distance between these items. One way is to go inside the list item. And if we do that by creating a margin dash right and set this one to something like 10 pixels. If we were to go inside my browser, 
we can now see that we have a little bit of spacing going between these. But the difference here is that there's actually no link in between the list items. So if I take my mouse cursor, you can actually see there's nothing I can click in between them. Uh, if you want that to be a thing, then you can just take the margin right, delete it, go inside my anchor tag down here, and instead of margin right, you can say padding. And instead of saying right, let's actually go ahead and make sure it's on both sides because that would actually make sense in this case here. So I can actually say padding and it should be zero pixels from the top and bottom and it should be 10 pixels from the left and right. If you neglect to put in the last two, so in this case here, we could also do this. This would mean the exact same thing as doing this because it's just gonna assume that, okay, so we get to the end. Okay, but we still need two more sides. So we're just gonna restart from the start again. So this is kind of like a shorthand of doing that. But if I were to do this, you'll now notice that when I refresh it, it actually creates this little uh, link spacing in between them as well. So even though I go next to the text, I can still click the link, which is something that I've noticed that websites tend to do. And it's something I like doing as well. The next thing we can do is we can actually change the actual font. So right now it has this ugly looking font so we can go inside our CSS styling. And just to mention it, anytime you want to change the text itself, not the positioning of the text, but the text itself, then you do it inside the anchor tag because that is the one that actually targets the text. So if I were to go in here, I can actually go ahead and say we want to add a font dash family. And I want to set this one to Arial. Now, I know this is not really a considered pretty font to use inside your website, but it looks a little bit more normal than the default one that we have right now. So if we were to refresh this, you can now see that it looks a little bit more normal than this weird other font that we had to, to begin with. Uh, the next thing I can do is I can actually create a line height on this piece of text here. So I'm gonna say line dash height. And because my header right now has a height of 60 pixels, I can actually set a line height to 60 pixels which means that it's going to center it inside my browser here. So now I can see it's actually centered. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to create a little bit more spacing on the left side since I don't want my uh, navigation to be right up against the logo. So what I can actually do is I can go inside my UL styling, which is the unordered list that we have up here. And I can actually go ahead and say, I want to create a margin left. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this one to 30 pixels. And I'm gonna go ahead and go inside my browser, refresh it. And now I can see there's a little bit of distance going uh, because I'm moving the entire list of items to the right side. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the logo a little bit because I do think it is a little bit small and I do also want to have it centered when it comes to the vertical axis. So what I can do here is I can actually go in and what we could do is actually just go inside our main dash logo. And because we have this one set to display flex, we can actually go inside our actual image styling and use that flex box to actually center it because we talked about that in the flex box episode. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and say align self and put this one to center. Save that, go inside refresh it, and now I can see we centered the logo, but I do want to increase the size of it. So let's actually go ahead and say the height should be maybe 40 pixels instead. I'm gonna go back inside, refresh, and now it looks a little bit more like how I want it to look like. There is still one issue though, which is that right now, uh, we don't have any spacing on the left side of the browser, so I do want to fix that. So going inside here, what I'll do is I'll go inside the, the container for these pieces of content. So right now it's the header dash main dash logo. And I do want to create a padding. So I'm gonna go in here and say that I want to create a, let's actually do that right before the flex, padding left. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a 60 pixel padding. Now, I just wanna mention it, the order of in how you do CSS inside one of these stylings here don't matter uh, unless you're trying to overwrite something. So if I write a padding left here and then I write a padding left below, which you would never do, um, but then it would actually take the last one. But just so you know that the order doesn't matter. I could also put this after display flex. It's just more of a, because I think it looks better to me personally when it comes in here, like all the flex styling should go below display flex. That, that's how I like to do things. So in this case here, display left, it's gonna be done like this. Go back inside the browser, refresh, and now you can see that we have a uh, distance to the side of the browser. And we can actually do the same thing for the other side. So let's go ahead and go back inside our CSS, go down to the last of the div boxes, which is SM. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and paste in 
the same thing, but except for padding right. The next thing I want to do here is I actually want to insert my social media icons. So what I can do is I can go inside my last div container down here. Just go down to next line so we can insert something inside of it. And we could go ahead and insert these as images if you wanted to. Uh, but because I want to have this hover effect on top of them, what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and insert two divs. And I know there's something called div itis, which is a term that you use when you use div and div and div again inside your HTML. But you really have to keep in mind that if there is a semantic tag that you can use instead, for example, with the navigation up here, you could also just have said div and then that would have worked perfectly fine but it's not very semantic. So in cases where you just need to structure content, but not really tell the browser that this is you know, a section of specific content, you can go and use divs in order to do that. So in this case here, this div is going to be my Facebook icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the class, paste it in here, and I'm gonna call it header-main-sm-facebook or FB for short. Um, what I can then do is I can copy this box, paste it below, and I can call this one IN for Instagram. And I'll save this, go inside my styling, go below here, and then I'll target these particular classes. So the first one is going to be class named header main SMFB. I will then make it a certain size. So I'll say width is going to be in this case here, let's say 20 pixels just to start with. I don't know exactly how big that is going to be, but just to begin with, height is going to be 20 pixels. And I'm also gonna go ahead and give it a background image. And this is going to be a URL that is going to lead in to my image folder. So we have to go back one directory because the CSS file is inside another folder. And then I can go inside my image folder and then I can go ahead and target my facebook.png because I want the original images to be black and white. And then when I hover, they're going to change to colored versions. So in this case, I'm just going to choose Facebook and I'm going to go ahead and say background dash repeat. And I'm going to set this one to no repeat. I'm also going to go ahead and say background dash size. And I'm going to set this one to cover. Now we don't need to insert the background position because the dimensions here for the width and the height are the same as the image. Uh, like it's it's the same width and height inside the image itself. So we don't need to do anything in terms of like centering the image because it will fit inside the container. So if I were to save this, go back inside my browser, refresh it, you can now see that we have the Facebook icon. And I do actually think that the size is pretty good. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do the same thing for the other one. So I'll copy this, paste it below and change the second one to IN for Instagram. Then I can also change the photo. So it's going to be Instagram and it's going to be the black and white version. Version, that <laughs> version. <laughs> um, then I can go back inside the browser, refresh it. And now I can see we have both of them in here. And again, just like with inside when it came to the other pieces of content here, we could add a float left to both of these and that will actually fix it or we can actually go ahead and make the main container, which is header main SM into a flex box. So we're gonna go and do that. And this is the main container I have right here. I'm gonna say display flex and save it. Go back inside, refresh. And now I can see they're next to each other. We do also want to center them. So let's go back in here, go down to the actual icons down here and say, I want to have a align self and put it to center. Actually, this doesn't make sense. Let's actually do something even better. So instead of adding that styling to both of these, let's just go back up to the original one and say I want to align items center because that is going to apply to all of them inside this container here. So if I save this, go inside my browser, refresh, you can now see they're centered inside the browser here. Let's also go and make sure that there's no fix width. So right now we set it to 120 pixels just to like as a placeholder to begin with. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this one to fit content. So I'm going to copy this, go in here and say we want to fit content. If I were to refresh, you can now see that it's fitting the content, but it's also adding that padding that we added in earlier. So it is pushed away from the edge, just like on the other side here. So by going in and actually adding that uh, extra padding right down here, it is actually pushing the content. However, we do also want to make sure that there is a little bit of a gap 
between these items here. And there's a couple of ways we could do this. Either we could go down to the Facebook icon and just say we want to have a margin to one of the sides to push away from the Instagram icon, or we could actually just go in and say we want to create a gap. And we can go ahead and say this should be a row gap because in this case, it's just this axis here we're trying to create a gap between. So I could say something like 10 pixels. If we do that, go back in here, you'll now notice, whoops, that actually didn't change anything, uh, column gap. Go back in here, refresh, and now you can see that we have a gap. So not row, it's not this way, that's column. That was me mistakenly, for some reason, I couldn't figure out row and column <laughs> in my head there. Um, but now we have a little bit of spacing. So what we can actually do now because everything is kind of starting to look like what we want it to. Um, I just want to mention something here, which is that we can actually, if you want to have a centered navigation, you can actually go ahead and just take this navigation, copy it, put it outside the div box here, save it. And then you'll actually notice that we have a centered navigation. Of course, you need to add a little bit of different styling here. You would also need to make some changes to the side content here so they have the same width. Otherwise, it's not gonna be completely centered. Again, we talked about this in the Flexbox episode. Um, so you can do that just by moving it out is what I'm trying to say. So I'll just go ahead and redo because I do want it to be right next to each other. So we put them there. And what I'll do now is I'll actually go ahead and just delete the background colors. So I'm going to delete the background color red, the background color orange, and the background color yellow. Save it, go back inside, refresh, and now you can see we have something that looks a little bit more proper inside the browser. There's a couple of things more that I want to add, which are hover effects. Because right now, when I put my cursor on top of these images and, and the links over here, I do want to have some effects happening because, and also with the icons over here, I do also want to make sure they actually link somewhere, which they don't right now. So let's go ahead and go back inside our styling. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start by wrapping my div box inside the social media box down here. I'm gonna wrap it inside anchor tags. So we just wanna make sure we have anchor tags and we wanna put the closing one on the other side of this div box here. So this entire div box, whoops, actually goes ahead and links to a certain place. So in this case here, I could just go ahead and say that the hyper reference should be whatever Facebook page that might be for this company here. So we could say uh, www.facebook.com. And then it would actually go to Facebook. Uh, I can go ahead and copy paste this entire thing, paste it below and change it to Instagram.com and also make sure we add the closing tag, of course. Otherwise, we're not gonna have a complete link here. So by doing this and going back inside the browser, refresh, you can now see that we have the little hand icon when it comes to uh, putting the mouse cursor on top of the thing here. Now, you may have noticed something here, which is when I did refresh the browser, we got a little bit more spacing between these icons here. And I thought to myself, okay, so why is that happening? Because that's not supposed to happen. Uh, again, just to teach you this, you can right click when you see something that's not working, inspect, and then you can actually see the HTML inside your website. So you can actually see the entire structure of what is going on here. If I take a look at this, and it is kind of tiny for you to see, but I do have my main uh, SM container. As, as you can see, it's right here, it's highlighted. And inside of here, it says that I have a anchor tag that has a Facebook icon. And then it says I have a anchor tag with a Instagram icon, but it's not highlighting the Instagram icon. So if we go down to next line, it is now giving me the dip box with the Instagram icon. So there's something going on here where the second link is not being registered as this div box being the link. So if we go back inside the HTML, take a look at what is going on over here. Let's just stretch this out so we can actually see. You can now see that by accident, it actually created a closing anchor tag right after the opening anchor tag for my link. So if I delete that, now we have the closing anchor tag over here that is working out. If we were to save this, refresh, and now I can see everything is back to normal. So just so you can see that you can use the uh, developer tool here as a uh, way to see what is actually going on inside the website because now it's actually registering these anchor tags as having the divs inside of them, which is a very nice, useful way to use this tool here. Um, so with this, we now want to create these hover effects. So what I can do, is I can go back inside my CSS file 
And I'll start with the actual navigation links. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste my header main nav ULLIA, paste it below. And I want to say that I want to add a pseudo class called hover right after. And I'm just gonna go and delete everything that is here because the only styling that should go in here is the actual changes that you want to make. So in this case here, what I can do is I can say, I want to change the color of my text and I can set this one to, let's say, now I do actually have a small color in between the logo here that I could use as my hover uh, color. And I'm just gonna go and go inside Photoshop, paste that in and take my drop tool just to find out what exactly that color is. There it is. Get the color, copy it, go back inside my styling and say I want that to be the color. So hashtag that color there. Uh, we do also need to make sure we actually give it some kind of color inside our anchor tag up here. So let's actually do that as well because the default color right now is just whatever the reset style sheet is giving it. Uh, so just so we have control over it, let's go ahead and say hashtag zero, 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 which is a complete black color. So doing this, going back inside my website, I can actually go ahead and give it a different color when I hover my mouse on top of the text in here. And by the way, there is a way for us to actually go in and make sure that there is some links going below the actual navigation. Because usually when it comes to websites, if you go below the text, you can still click it. Uh, so we can actually go and fix that too if you want to. Um, so going inside our same place, actually, inside the anchor tag, I can go ahead and say I want to display as a block, which means that now this text becomes a block element that can have a background color and different things. Uh, so I can actually go and say that the height should be 100% because that is the height of my header right now. So we would go inside my browser again, refresh. You can now see that nothing really changed visually inside the browser, but it's actually going to link all the way down to the bottom because I told it that instead of just a piece of text, it has to be a block element. And I want it to stretch all the way to the height of the actual header. And because we added in the line height, it is going to still gonna go ahead and center the text inside this block element. So this is how we can actually do that really fast just to show you that. But let's go ahead and create the hover effect for the social media icon. So let's go down here to the bottom and say that we want to copy the styling for the Facebook one. And we're just gonna go and delete everything except for the background image. And I want to create a hover pseudo class. So I'm gonna say hover. And I want to change the link from Facebook to Facebook dash color. And I wanna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy this entire thing, paste below the Instagram one and change of course the class name to IN instead of FB. I'm gonna change the background. So it says Instagram dash color. Now something is gonna happen here which is that when I go back inside my website and refresh it, it is going to do that weird stutter where it like blinks the first time. And it may be like a tiny thing and it may not matter too much when it comes to like the social media icons in here. Uh, it, it's a little bit worse when it's like a big image inside your website. Like this is not gonna be too visible, but still, if you don't want to have the flicker, we can solve that. So let's go ahead and go back inside our styling. And let's actually go to the top of the style sheet because I want to preload some images into my website here. So what I'll do right after the body tag is I'll actually go and say we want to uh, grab the body and I want to add a pseudo class called after, which means that we're gonna insert content after the body tag and I'm gonna go ahead and load in uh, some content. So I'm gonna load in content by writing content and I can create a URL to my image. So in this case here, uh, we can go back one directory, go inside the image folder and I can take the Facebook color one and just paste that in. I can copy the URL and say we have a second photo that I want to also preload, which is going to be Instagram in this case here. And then we do of course need to do a couple of things because right now if I were to actually save this, go inside my browser, refresh it, you can see that we actually load it into the website. Uh, so we need to hide it now that it's loaded in and preloaded into the site. Uh, so going back inside the style sheet, what I can do at the top here is I can say we first of all want to give it a position set to absolute. I do also want to give it a width set to zero. I want to give it a height set to zero. I do also want to give it a, let's say overlay or overflow is going to be set to hidden. 
And then I do also want to give it a set index in case it in some sort of way still is visible inside the browser. I can set this one to negative one, which means that it's going to go behind everything inside the browser and just kind of like get shoved in the back. Uh, so doing this is actually going to allow for us to go inside our website, refresh it, and now I can see it, it's loaded in, but it's not visible anymore, which means that when I go on top of my social media icons, we're no longer gonna get that little flicker at the beginning. So the first time you load up the website, it's not gonna flicker. And that's basically what we solved here. So with this, we now have a navigation inside the website that you can add in. And it's just kind of like, a very basic navigation, but I think it's a very good, fun little one to do together here. So with that, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.